Hello everyone and welcome to Jenkinix session. My name is uh, Roy Ben Chaim and I'm present uh, with Vimer. Uh, so what is Jenkinix? Jenkinix is an open source tool that allows you to push uh, source code and get a running application. To, to, to understand uh, how Jenkinix works, I will go a little bit back in the history to the application development. Uh, how they change the landscape. If we go back in the history, uh, the application were monolithic. That means all the components of the application reside on the same server. From developer perspective, if I am a developer responsible for the app, for example, and I want to change code in the app and see the reflection of this change, I need to redeploy the old servers. It takes time and efforts. Then the market moved to the distributed. We we distributed the components of the monolithics, and now each uh, tier running in separate servers. And now, if I'm a developer responsible for the app, and I want to do change to the code of the app, I just need re deploy the app server. And this, this, the modern application moved to microservices-based application. Each dot here represents uh, microservices. And the microservices communicate with each other via REST API calls, and they are independent, can be written in any language, and, uh, and they're running as a container. So you may ask, why, why should I care? So this is the reason. If you want to release faster on the, on the old models, the monolithic and the multi-tier, we can see that the release cycles are two or three per year for, for application. And in the microservices, we can see that the deployments are 10 or 100 in production per day. So that means I can introduce new features to my, uh, my application. A lot of time when I'm talking to C-level and manager of microservices, it's hard to get. So I give, uh, give uh, this example of my Amazon.com. As you can see, this website is built with a lot of microservices, uh, just in the, new, in the UI and also in the backend. But for example, the item that you want to purchase is a microservices. The search engine is a microservices. So now, if you want to introduce new feature like the auto completion for the search engine, you just need to change and upgrade the, the container that runs the microservices. So this is just to give you the idea. So how do we achieve fast deployment? To, to understand that, let's, uh, let's see the application development model. Most of the time, developers working on the laptops and testing their, their code on the laptops. Then they will push the code to a source control. The source control gives you the ability to keep versioning of the applications and also to give other developers to keep in sync. Then, if we want to test the application, we need to convert the application. Uh, oops. Uh, we have a little bit of problem. It looks like we lost the power for the TV. Sometimes. Next slide. Uh, uh, it's okay. Thank you. So we need to convert the source code to something that can run on the operation system. This is the build process. So we have the CI server that takes the source code and convert it to something called artifact. And we put the artifact on the repository to keep all the, the versioning of the application. Now we want to deploy the application, the artifacts. So we need the environment to deploy. Most of the time, we have different environments for dev, stage, and prod. What we see in the middle is the continuous integration, in short, CI. And in the right, it's the continuous deployment, CD. So this is the CI CD deployment, uh, the CI CD process. A lot of time, you will learn the term uh, pipeline. So it, this is the pipeline, how we pushing the code and getting running application. When we start to push the application, we will start with the dev environment. And if everything go well, we will move the application to the UAT, user acceptance environment or review environment. Then we can bring better user to see the application and give us feedbacks. And if everything is go well, we will move the application to the production. So uh, you may say, okay, let's start do it. Let's create the CI CD. 
And this is where you face the reality. It's not that easy. There is a lot of open source tool that you need to deal, and it's a lot of configuration files and plugins that you need to know how to install. Uh, and this is where Jenkins X came to help. So let's take the same model again, and let's see what Jenkins X, uh, how Jenkins X can help. So the first in the CI, Jenkins X used GitHub, and in the demo that I'm going to show you, it will be with GitHub, but Jenkins X can work with GitLab. So this is the source control. For the CI, Jenkins X used the open source famous Jenkins. For the keeping the, the artifacts file, we are using a Harbor, uh, because the, uh, this demo is showing how Jenkins X will run on top of PKS. So the Kubernetes cluster is, will be part of the PKS. And, of course, we have a Nexus so to keep all the artifacts files uh, in the Nexus repository. On the right, for the continuous deployment, we will have the Kubernetes cluster, and each environment will be separate namespace. So for the dev, we're starting with the JX namespace. Staging, it's a namespace, and production, it's a namespace. All of this namespace is part of the Kubernetes cluster, and, of course, everything is managed from the PKS the day one, creating the cluster and upgrade the cluster, everything is from the PKS controller. Each time that we are changing the code, we will create new version of our application. And we will also get with Jenkins new image container. So when we're starting the first uh, deployment, the, the, the container will run on the JX environment. And then, when we want to move the, the application to the staging, we are, we'll do the pull request with GitHub. And this will promote the pipeline and move the application to the staging environment. Then, with the demo that I'm going to show you, we can move the application to the production environment, and the new container image will run on the production environment. With Jenkins X, we're also creating L chant. For each version, we will get new L chart uh, out of the box, and we will keep this M chart in the chart museum. This is the repository for the M chart. So you can see there is a lot of open source tools gluing out of the box uh, for, for achieving CI CD. For this demo, I also going to show you another open source tool. It's not part of Jenkins X, it's called CubeApps, and this is nice UI catalog to expose the Helm chart for users. So if you want to expose the application to your user, you can just push the Helm chart to the cube apps. In terms of language that Jenkins X supports, it supports a lot of language, like Node.js, Ruby, uh, PHP, Go. Uh, but if the language uh, that you like is not here, you can bring your own language to Jenkins X. And this is the collection of the open source. And this is the Kubernetes uh, uh, flavors that Jenkins X supports. Uh, you can see any kind of uh, flavors of Kubernetes. And of course, my, my work was with the developer to allow to Jenkins X to work on top of PKS. Uh, I create a blog post how to install Jenkins X on top of uh, PKS, so you can read it and use it uh, at home. Now let's start the demo. OK, the first things I will, what I would like to show you is that we have a Kubernetes cluster. Through the PKS CLI, we have one cluster. You can see that we have three nodes in this cluster. We can see the health status of the nodes with the Bosch command. We can see that we have three master in this cluster and three worker nodes. To save some time, I already installed the Jenkins X products on this Kubernetes cluster. To interact with Jenkins X, you use the JX command line, and you, you see all the options. So this is a fresh installation of Jenkins X. Out of the box, we have three environments. The JX environment, the staging environment, and the production environment. For each environment, we have corresponding namespace. For, for example, the staging, we have a staging namespace in the Kubernetes. And we also have repository for each environment. For the staging, we have a repository on GitHub. And for the production, we have repository. 
here is the namespace. In the Kubernetes, we have JX namespace, production namespace, and staging namespace. Now let's go to, uh, to see what is the repository. This is the production repository on GitHub, and this is the staging repository on GitHub. This is the Jenkins UI. We have two pipelines, production pipeline and staging pipeline. This is a fresh installation. You get it out of the box. You don't need to configure anything, OK? To do a quick demo with Jenkins, they create for us uh, the ability to run a quick demo with which language that you like. In this demo, I will go with uh, Node.js. So I will show you how quickly we, you can run a code from Node.js. The name of the demo is VMworld Demo. The, the wizard asks you a few questions on what is the GitHub account, what is the name of the, the repository that you want to give for this demo. And uh, after finish this wizard, Jenkins will create a new pipeline for this demo. Okay, and it will create new repository on the GitHub, uh, GitHub account for this demo. Behind the scenes, if you try to really understand what is going on, if you go to the folder that created for this demo, you will see a few files created for you. For example, the Docker file. You don't need to, do, to handle it. Jenkins created for you the Docker file. This is the, the description how to, to build the, the container image. The, the, the pipeline has a code already created for you. You can see it. So what I'm trying to say, it's very easy. You don't need to be expert on Jenkins or GitHub or there are 10 open source here that you not need to deal with them, okay? So when, when I created the, 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 the demo, you can see that a new uh, uh, repository created on, on uh, the GitHub and we have the master branch here and all the files that I show you also uh, replicated to here. The job already started to work, and what is happening right now, it's what I show you. If you remember the CI CD process, we were starting the build process. We're taking the source code of the Node.js, and now we are running the build process and creating a Docker image from here, from this uh, file. And also, uh, we will put the Docker in, in the, another, in the, in, with PKS, we, we have uh, the Harbor. Harbor is the places that we put, keeping all the image of the container. So now, as you can see, it's starting the, the build process. And when it's finished, you can see there is a Harbor.lab.local. The image is uh, right now pushing to Harbor. So this is the Harbor UI. And you can see we have a new container image, new project, and it's version 1.0.0.1. And now, if we want to move the application from the dev environment to the staging environment, we just need to click on the pull request, OK? And now the pipeline will start in the, in the staging environment. So we, will, we are now promoting the application, moving the application from the dev to the stage. It will take some time to complete this process, so I will speed up a little bit the, the demo and move it forward. Yeah. So let's see what is going on on the on the staging environment right now. Uh, we need to do kubectl get pod on the staging environment. The process is not finished yet, so we don't have any pod right now on the on on the staging environment. Let's move it a little bit further. This is another, another view of the pipeline uh, with Jenkins. OK, so you can see we have a new release right now on, on the repository on the GitHub. That means that we, we move a little bit forward with the process. And this is the, the Cube Apps, another open source tool that I would like to show you. What you see right now, this open source is created by Bitnami uh, company, and it's a collection of uh, Helm charts. It's a, so you can deploy the application here on top of the Kubernetes. You just click Deploy, and it will deploy the Helm chart for you. What I did here is the integrated the, the Cube Apps open source with Jenkins. So when the, the pipeline will finish, 
we will get a new Helm chart automatically published to QBAP. So if you want to expose this application for user, it's very easy to do it. So I just, I'm showing you right now that there is no any uh, VMworld demo uh, Helm chart right now because the process is not finished yet. We need for the process to, to finish. And here it is. If, if you can see the, the, the Jenkins show me that we have the application running in this URL. I can click on this URL to access the application to see how it looks like. Let's click on it. And here it is. So this is my, the first demo. Hello world from Jenkins. Uh, we can also get the, the information of the application from, with the JX command. So if we, we do JX get up, we will, we will see the, the URL and the version of the application and where it's running on the, on the staging environment. If you can see version 001 is running and this is the URL to access the application. Okay. And here I w would like to show you that uh, the Helm chart is uh, also uh, running on the, on the cube apps. Yes. Well, you're talking about tagging the image, the container image, or? So the question is, yes, the question is, can we uh, tagging uh, the YAML files? Yeah, you're talking about uh, how we can tag the, uh, so NS6 can understand it. So uh, the question was, can we tag the, the YAML files so we can create a policy with NS6? And the answer is yes, you can always access the YAML files in the backend and modify them if you want. And a matter of fact, by the way, it's a good question because I can show you from here. This is Jenkins, you see the JX. The Helm chart is creating by JX. If you click deploy the Helm chart, in, this is version 111, 001, sorry. You can see this is the YAML file. The, the, the YAML file. You can modify it right here. You can put a label here and then use this label then with NS6 and creating policy based on this label with NS6. I want to integrate in the process. I don't want to, you know, I want to do the 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 So uh, maybe we can talk uh, speak later and let's continue with the demo. As you can see the image is coming from Harbor for the for this. Now the, the second, the continue of the demo is I want to modify the source code and see what's happened. I opened the, the, the Node.js files and I went just ch changing the text to something else from a low VMworld or something. So here, the changing is only, uh, right now is on my laptop and it's not reflecting to GitHub yet, okay? So I'm saving the file and now I need to, to do a commit to sync the, the change to the GitHub, git commit. Give it a tag, version 002, and then git push to push it to GitHub. And what is, we'll start now, the pipeline, we will start a new job in the pipeline. It will take a few minutes uh, for, Jenkins to, for Jenkins to understand that there is a new commit. But from the GitHub, you can see right away that we have a new version and you can see the change of the code, what's happening. Uh, and if we go back to Jenkins, you will see the job already started. So we are starting the job, uh, the whole process starting again. The build process, we will get a new container image, we will, we will get new artifact file, and then we will start deploying the, the new version on the JX environment. So let's move it a little bit faster to save some time. Okay, here's the container is uh, building. And now we're pushing the container image to Harbor. If we go to Harbor, we're expecting to see a new version here. And we have a new image, 002. Now we need to uh, do the pull request to merge the change of the code to the master branch. 
let's move it a little bit faster. Yeah, here's, here is the merging. I'm going to show you what's happening in the Kubernetes right now. In the JX environment, we have a new, uh, a new pod for Node.js. And if we move to the staging environment, we, we should uh, see a new version of the pod creating. Staging. So the idea of this pod is right now it's nothing, and let's wait for a few seconds, and it's happening right now. Go back and do the same command again, get the pod, and you can see the pod ID is changing right now. So. We create a new pod, and now the, the new version of the application is running. If we do JX get apps, you can see new version 002 is running. The URL didn't, did not change because this is the same application. I'm reopening the website, my application, and I see the reflection of the code right now. So you can see it's so easy. If I am a developer and I want to achieve faster dev uh, development, it's very easy to use uh, Jenkins X. And you don't need to do anything with Jenkins or with the other open source tool. So uh, this was the demo. If you have any question, this is the right time to ask them. Yes. Yes. It, it, the rolling update is part of Kubernetes stuff. So if you want to do it, you go to kubectl and do whatever you want. Ah, I need I need to check this. Okay. The question was: uh, Does Jenkins do it uh, in rolling upgrade scenario, or uh, kill the running pod and create new pod? So I need to verify this. So the question is: What uh, what is the integration between Jenkins to PKS? So. Jenkins X out of the box works with uh, a lot of uh, uh, Kubernetes flavors. And what I did here is to, to make it work uh, is the integration of, with Harbor. I don't know if you know Harbor has become now uh, officially open source. So, uh, but out of the box, Jenkins X doesn't support Harbor. So what we did is to integrate Harbor part of the process. So you saw the image uh, automatically update to Harbor. So this was part of the integration. Thank you for this question, Alicia. Any other question? So that's it.